We're going to be continuing with our rules of exponents and today we're dealing with division. Now rules of exponents are always very easy. As long as you know what exponents means, exponents mean, you can figure out the rules of exponents. Let's have a look at an example and I'll show you what I mean by this. If you've got x to the 5 divided by x squared, I'm going to first just write that as a fraction because it'll make it easier for me. So x to the 5 divided by x squared can be written like that. Now here's what I mean by the rules are easy if you just know what exponents mean. Because x to the 5 means you've got x multiplied together 5 times. And x squared just means you've got x multiplied together 2 times. Now you can see, you can cancel those two x's at the bottom with two of the x's at the top. So what will you be left with? Well, you had five x's and you cancelled two of them. So what you will be left with is, you had five, you cancelled two of them, you will be left with three of them. Let's just do one more example to make sure we've all got that. If we've got a to the 7 over a to the 5, what we're taking is we've got a multiplied together 7 times. And at the bottom, we've got a to the 5, which is just a multiplied together 5 times. And just as before, right, those five a's at the bottom are going to cancel with five of the a's from the top. And so you can see, what is this thing that you're left with here? Well, you started with seven a's at the top, and you cancelled five of them with the ones at the bottom. And so what you're left with is just two a's multiplied together, which is a squared. Now, obviously, you don't always want to be writing out the whole multiplication. For example, if you're left with something like b, you've got something like b to the 28 divided by b to the 22, the rule will just help you here. But let's think it through and make sure we really understand how this works. If we've got b to the 28 over b to the 22, picture it. At the top here, you would have 28 b's all multiplied together. At the bottom, you'll have 22 b's all multiplied together. So these 22 b's at the bottom will cancelled with 22 of the 28 b's at the top. What will you be left with? Well, you had 28. 22 of them got cancelled with the ones at the bottom. And so what you'll be left with is 6 b's multiplied together. In other words, b to the 6. This rule for division leads us to another rule. But before we get to that, we're just going to make sure we all know one important fact about division. If I ask you what's 3 divided by 3, or 100 divided by 100, or 2,352 divided by 2,352, hopefully you immediately know that each of those will just be equal to 1. So if all of those are equal to 1, what will 3 to the power of 5 over 3 to the power of 5 be equal to? Well, it has to be equal to 1. But remember the rule we've just done, right? If we had saw 3 to the power of 5 divided by 3 to the power of 5, we would say that's equal to you had 5 at the 3s multiplied together at the top and you cancelled them with the 5 that were at the bottom. And so you would have 3 to the power of 0. And so this tells us that 3 to the power of 0 must be equal to 1. Similarly, 100 to the power of 0 must be equal to 1. And in fact, anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Anything actually except 0 itself. If we have 0 to the power of 0, it is undefined. It is not something that we know how to deal with. It's undefined. So this is another rule that we need. x to the power of 0 
anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Okay, we can then get a lot more complicated in the kind of question we have to deal with. But just like we did with the multiplication, if we just go through it step by step, dealing with the numbers, then the x's, then the y's, etc., it actually isn't so difficult. So let's have a look at something like this one. With division, I always find it easiest to write it as a fraction. So I'm going to first write it as a fraction. And then I can work from there. So as I said, we first deal with the numbers, then we're going to deal with the x's, then we're going to deal with the y's. So let's have a look. As long as they're all multiplied together, there's no problem. Let's go and have a look. We've got the numbers. We've got a 3 and we've got a 9. Can we deal with those? Well, you know how to simplify fractions. Divide the top by 3, divide the bottom by 3. And so what you're left with of the numbers is a 1 at the top and a 3 at the bottom. OK, let's go on to the next one. As I said, straight after that, I'm going to deal with the x's. OK, let's deal with the x's. I've got x to the 4 over x cubed. Well, we know how to deal with that. That's going to be equal to x to the 4 minus 3, which is just x to the power of 1. And we know that x to the power of 1 is just exactly the same as x. And then let's deal with the y's next, right? Well, what have we got with the y's? What we've got is we've got y squared over y. So it's y to the 2 minus 1, which is y to the 1. And we know y to the 1, that's just equal to y. So we get our answer. 1xy over 3. And if we want to just even write that more nicely, we know that if we have 1 xy, that's just the same as xy over 3, right? If our coefficient is 1, we often don't write it. All right, let's just summarize our exponential, the two new exponential rules we have in our homework books. Pause the video now and just write them in. Okay, let's check you got it correct. If you have a to the m divided by a to the n, we can write it as a fraction like this. You can picture that. You've got m of these a's multiplied together at the top, n of them at the bottom. So these n a's will cancel with n of them from the top. And so what you'll be left with are just m minus n of them. And then we also saw that for everything to make sense, a to the 0 had to be equal to 1, except in the case where a is actually itself 0, then it's undefined.